Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Let's go to our Bibles. And uh, uh, this week, I'm going to continue speaking to you over the subject of entitled, uh, What do you do when everything is working against you? What do you do when uh, everything is working against you? As a matter of fact, it's very important for every believer to know that at one time, at one point, things will go wrong in your life. You know, things will just happen in your life. And when things go wrong, don't blame yourself. And don't blame the devil. It simply means it is a, an opportunity for you to grow. When things go wrong in your life, it simply means it is an invitation where God is promoting you to new dimensions. Things will go wrong, but then what will matter is uh, your attitude to the situation. Your attitude will determine either you're going to grow from it or you're going to be stuck in it because things will go wrong. Therefore, my message is entitled, uh, What do you do when everything is working against you. And uh, today we're going to learn from a man called uh, Gideon. We're going to learn from Gideon. And uh, turn with me to the book of uh, Judges, chapter 6. And we'll be reading from uh, verse uh, 11. Judges, chapter 6, and we'll be reading from verse 11. What do you do when uh, everything is working against you? You know, if you are a businessman, there will come a time when uh, things will be working against your business. If you are a student, you are going to experience circumstances which are going to work against your education. If you are married, you are going to experience conditions in your marriage which will work against you. And what we need to establish this uh, morning, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, what do you do when everything is working against you? Judges chapter 6, from verse 1, the, rather from verse 11, Judges chapter 6, verse 11, the Bible reads, The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah that belonged to Josh, the abbey's right, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat, in wine press. I want you to note, the Bible says he was threshing wheat in wine press. I want you to know that. To keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me? My Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders and our ancestors, which our ancestors told us about? When they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Bible says, ladies and gentlemen, that one morning Gideon was uh, threshing wheat in the wine press. Say after me, he was threshing wheat in a wine press. Now, now what, what this simply means is that uh, he was threshing wheat in a wrong place because uh, wheat is threshed on the ground where there is wind so that as you are threshing wheat, separating the corn from the from the uh, from the uh, covers or, or from the grass rather, as you are separating the corn from the grass, the wind might blow the grass. Are you here with me? The Bible says Gideon was running away from the Midianites. Because what the Midianites would do whenever the Israelites would uh, plant wheat or crops, the Midianites will show up and will burn what the Israelites have uh, planted. And the Bible says now Gideon was running away from the Midianites. 
And he found himself in a wine press. And as he was there, threshing the wheat in the wine press, an angel of the Lord appeared to him and greeted him. The angel said, greetings to you, mighty men of war. You know, it's a very, very sarcastic way of greeting somebody who is running away from someone. I want you to look at this. That's why I wanted you to take note of, uh, of um, verse, um, verse uh, 11, part B, where the Bible says, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. In other words, uh, Gideon was hiding from the Midianites. Therefore, he was threshing wheat in a wine press. And the angel of the Lord says to Gideon, Gideon, might man of war. What would you do? If you are in a situation, and that situation has actually collapsed your faith in the Lord, that situation has messed up your conception of who God is, and that situation has just uh, messed you up and you are not sure whether you are going or you are coming. And the angel of the Lord appears to you and smiles at you and says, uh, greetings to you, mighty woman of war. I mean, what would you do? You would say, yes, so this is what I would do. This is what I would say. But now before we read, uh, we read uh, verse 11, there is a scripture in chapter 6, verse 6, where the Bible says, the Israelites were so impoverished by their enemies, the Midianites, and they cried out to God for help, and God answered their prayers by giving them a prophet. Always very profound. Whenever you pray, God will place somebody in your life. So in other words, God is going to answer your prayers by sending somebody. I want you to listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Judges chapter 6, verse 6, the Bible says the Israelites were so impoverished by the Midianites, and they cried out to God for help, and God answered their prayers by sending them a prophet. Every time you pray, you must always remember Whatever you're praying for, there is someone somewhere who has it. Whatever you're praying for, there is someone somewhere who has it. Shalom. This is Pastor Enoch Perry. Did you know that God designed your body to operate at easy? Did you know that anything which is foreign in your body was never designed to be there, such as sicknesses, diseases, and anything which is not of God. I'm there for believing God for your breakthrough and your healing. And as a servant of God and as a prophet of God, I believe that healing is your portion. I'm there for inviting you every Tuesday at Restoration House in Protea Glen, Soweto from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Make an appointment with Jesus and Jesus will never let you down. See you then. If you're praying for a job, there is someone somewhere who's looking for somebody to get the kind of job you're looking for. Every time, you must remember that. That's why I always say that uh, whenever you are praying for money, you must always remember that there is no money in heaven. Money is here on earth. And whatever you're looking for is here on earth. But in order for you to access what you're looking for, you need to have a relationship with the headquarters of our kingdom, which is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Whatever you're looking for, you can only access it based on your relationship with the government which has deployed you to earth. Because you are deployed to earth. It must be somebody. We are here on earth to represent a superior government. That's why I, I always ask myself a question. How can a person live um, without a relationship with his government? Because uh, the message of Christ is about a relationship. So you need to have a relationship. So now Gideon, he was believing God 
for deliverance. Remember, for the fact that he was threshing wheat in a wine press, it means he had a desire of, of being delivered from the Midianites, isn't it? And God answered him by calling him to be a prophet, to be an answer, to be a solution to the people of Israel. Now, I want us to look at uh, what was his first assignment. We find it in verse 25, Judges chapter 6, verse 25. We need to look at uh, the first assignment which God gave to Gideon. You must always remember, ladies and gentlemen, when everything is working against you, it means there is something which God wants you to do. You must always remember that. Never look at yourself as a victim. You are not a victim, but you are victorious. Now, 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 Gideon is in a situation where, where God has already announced that he's a warrior before he knew that he was a warrior. In whatever situation where you are, never judge that situation based on the current circumstances. You must always judge the situation based on the promise which God has given you. Every situation must be viewed from the lens of the Holy Spirit, from the lens of the word of God. Always remember, it's not about how you are feeling, but it's about what God says. That's why I've got a word, or rather I've got a problem with the word uh, happiness. You know, where most people would say, I'm not happy at work. And they just fight. I'm not happy in my marriage, and they just fight. I'm not happy in the church, and they just fight. But then you also notice that uh, the term or word happiness is not one of the fruit of the Spirit. Because happiness is dangerous. I know all of us want to be happy, but I can tell you, happiness is dangerous. Happiness is an, an enemy of progress. Because the word happiness is derived from the word happenings. Say after me, happenings. Now, happenings are, are circumstances which are taking place in your life. So when things, good things are happening in your life, you are happy. And when bad things are happening in your life, you are sad. That's what the Bible says. Uh, you must pray for joy. You must seek joy. Because joy is one of the fruit of the Spirit, which must not be replaced with happiness, with happiness. Am I making sense to somebody? Because joy is knowing that I know he who has called me who will never leave me nor forsake me. I know he will make a way for me. Even if things are working against me, I know, I know this God has called me. I know what the Bible says about my situation. I know he shall heal me. I know he shall deliver me. And what propels you is joy. It's after me, joy. That's what the Bible says. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So as believers, we are not propelled by what is happening. Because what is happening is what brings about happiness or sadness. Are you happy? Your happiness is based on the happenings. Am I making sense to somebody? And, and if your, your happiness is based on your happenings, it means you are not walking by faith, but you are walking by sight. But then if you walk by faith, you are not consumed or even worried about what is happening. Your focus is on the promise. And this is exactly what is happening to, to, to Gideon. Gideon is hiding from his enemies. He's feeling weak. He's feeling less of a man. And he is working in the wine press. He's working in the basement. Because wine press were always in the basement to avoid the, 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 the dust from falling into the wine. He was working in a wrong place because he was hiding away from his enemies. Right where he was, the angel of the Lord said to him, to him Gideon, might man of war. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Your victory has already been determined by God. 
I don't care what you're going through. The God I save is the God of the Bible. And the God of the Bible is very faithful, will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, when, when Gideon received that encouragement from an angel, the Lord told him to do something in verse 25. That same night, the Lord said to him, take the second bull from your father's head, the one seven years old, tear down your father's altar to bow and cut down the ashen pole beside it. Verse 26, then build a proper kind. Then build a proper kind. You know, whenever God speaks to you, ladies and gentlemen, he will always instruct you to destroy a wrong altar. What is an altar? An altar is an elevated place of your life. That high place is called an altar. Whatever in your life you value, that is an altar. It's a place of sacrifice. You know, there are things in your life which you can sacrifice for, isn't it? Even if you are busy with something and when the other thing comes up, you are able to, 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 to say, you know what? Family comes first. So your family is your outer. You are the product of your own thoughts. Most people live defeated lives because they don't know who they are. As long as uh, we still have a mindset of a slave, uh, it's impossible for us as African people to live successful lives. Pastor Enoch F. Perry is described as an apostolic strategist, communicator of the kingdom message, teacher, thinker, and progressive leader. He possesses a passion in ministering the word of God in a clear, provocative, and revelatory manner. Come for his weekly sermons every Sunday at Restoration House Project and Extension 13. Services start at 10 a.m. For more info, please call us on plus 27-83-942-9332. That which comes first is your outer. That's why we always encourage you to put God first. Let God be number one in your life. Let God be that thing. When it comes up, everything must wait. Because if you love your family more than God, you are going to lose your family. Because God is a jealous God. You know, this God is just very jealous. He, that's why he will never share his glory with anyone. That's why many of you, when you're going through stuff, everyone rejects you. Everyone runs away from you. You know why? Because when God comes through for you, he doesn't want anybody to say, I helped you. I helped you. You know, when, when you are going through tough times, listen to me, that's the time to walk alone. If you are a supporter of Manchester, that's the time in Manchester they say you never walk alone, isn't it? When you go through stuff, my friend, you're going to stand alone. Even those people that are always there for you are going to disappear. You know why? Because God will never share his glory with anyone. So that when God comes through for you, nobody must say, I helped you, I made you, you are where you are because of me. In fact, that's a game of politics. In politics, they set you up to get a position so that you can look after us. That's what happens in politics. That's why when you don't deliver, they say we must recall you. Why? Because you don't deliver best on the things that we agreed on. We push you there so that you can push us up. That's why in the kingdom, you don't need nobody to help you. Only God. Now listen, God is going to put people in your path to advance your agenda. So, so now, God tells Gideon to destroy the altars of his father so that he can build a new altar. Whenever God wants to do something in your life, Whenever it's preparing you for, an, for a new assignment, God is going to shake whatever foundation you've built on. Doesn't matter whether it's a marriage foundation, God is going to shake it. Many of you are going through challenges in your marriage. You know why? God is shaking it. He's shaking that foundation so that uh, you may build a new foundation in the same marriage. I'm not saying you must leave that marriage. No. It's a time for you to rebuild. Every time 
When there is a shaking in your business, it means it is an opportunity for you to rebuild. Don't cry. My business is bad. It's not doing well. Whenever you go through challenges at your workplace, it means it is an opportunity which God is giving to you to rebuild. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. New seasons comes with new shakings. You can never go into a new season without a shaking. No, you can't. You can't. And you can't be in, a, in, a, in one company for 10 years, yet you're believing God for new dimension. You know what God will do? Before it releases you to a new dimension, it's going to shake where you are. It will shake you. There is no promotion without a shaking. I know we love to be promoted, but are we willing to be shaken? No, we are not. When you go through the shaking, what do you say? The devil. We are too devil conscious more than God conscious. Let me show you something in Matthew chapter, chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. This scripture changed my life. Once upon a time, I used to live a life of glorifying the devil. You know, how do you glorify the devil? When you give him credit, even for the thing that he never did. And many people do that. Everything in their lives is the devil. Now look at this. I pray this scripture changes your life. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. In one sentence. And Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. How did Jesus find himself in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil? He was brought there by the Holy Spirit. Shalom. This is Pastor Enoch Perry. At the beginning of this decade, the Lord laid upon my heart to declare 2010 to 2020 a decade of dominion. And for the past eight years, I have heard testimonies from our partners of how God has activated that inbuilt capacity within them to have dominion over their finances, over sicknesses, and over different circumstances because God designed you not to allow anything to have dominion over you, but for you to have dominion over all things. Now, to partner with me, I need you to send a text message or a WhatsApp message, then I will personally call you so that together we can have dominion. Remember this. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The Holy Spirit is going to set you up for your promotion. The Holy Ghost will set you up to be promoted. If you are this kind of a person who always avoids problems and troubles and challenges, you're never going to mount to greatness. Many people that have mounted to greatness, they always stand up to a challenge. When things go tough in a church, you want to run away. When things go tough in your company, you want to resign. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. This is a, this is a principle which people don't understand about business. You know, when you, look for, when you are looking for a job, you go in a company for an interview, and they interview you. You know, many people, they'll say, they didn't even ask about my CV. They'll ask you one question. Tell us about your life. And, 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 and they'll say to you, how long have you been married? Or how long have you been dating the person that you've, you are dating? If you say six months, it tells them that you are kind of a person who can never keep the job. Just by dating. How long have you been dating him? Three months. Before this one? That one, I think, oh, it was long. About four months. <laughs> <laughs> the, then you are telling me that you can't keep a job. Because remember, in a relationship, there are challenges. If you're a kind of a person who runs away from the challenges in a relationship, then you're going to run away from my company. So I don't want to employ you because you are not reliable. You easily quit. If you want to see, even ladies and gentlemen, when you meet, especially, especially ladies, when you meet a guy, 
and he tells you, I was in a previous relationship for three months, then uh, if you make it to the fourth month, it means you'll break a record in his life. <laughs> so just run away. You meet a person, how long have you been married? Uh, just uh, one year. Before this, ah, I had a relationship for three months. Before, one month. Before, one week, one night stand. May God give you grace. If you're married for one year, two years, God give you grace. Don't quit. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't quit. If it snores too much, go online on internet. How to cure snoring. <laughs> and cure him. Don't run away because he snores. You know, there are those people when they are sleeping, they go around, they even sleep across the bed. When you go to sleep, mbo pen one side. <laughs> so Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. It's after me, wilderness. A word wilderness sometimes is used interchangeably with the word desert, which means a bare land. Bare land. A desert is a place of no opportunities. Jesus was led into that place. Th there is a message here, brothers and sisters. All of you, before your promotion comes, you will find yourself in the wilderness where you'll be wandering about. Where you feel nothing is happening in my life. Where you feel stuck. Where you feel stressed, where you can even uh, have anxiety attacks. But I wanted to learn something from uh, the Bible. There is no one in the Bible times who was ever used by God and never went into the desert. Nobody. So Jesus, as a man, he had to go to a desert to be trained. A desert is a university of hard knocks.